wasn't sure if bringing you chocolate cake would be appropriate, Claude. I hope you don't mind. Chocolate cake is very appropriate, my dear. Uh, of course, I can't eat very much of it myself. Uh, my health won't allow. But Constance would have been feeling the need for some chocolate cake now. I don't doubt that. Thank you. It's funny. Uh, I've been a minister for 13 years now. I know all the theory about what to say when someone has died. I learned from the very best. But it's not right. How are any of us going to carry on without her? Constance was very fond of you, my dear. We appreciate your visits, Helena. I remember when you were ordained, she was incredibly proud. Besides, without you, she might never have completed her Swedish lessons. I'm supposed to be comforting you and you are ministering to me. Old habits, my dear. Old habits. Ah, that must be today's batch of letters. Every time I open another of these, I realize how generous she's been. Come, look at this one. I was saddened to hear only this week of the death of your wife, whose letters of encouragement and support were the starting point of my little stint with the Christian campaign for nuclear disarmament. CND could not go forward, lack of money, wife's generous contribution, indebted to her support and faith. Oh, look. Bishop Trevor Huddleston and Lord Donald Stoker. Anthony Wedgwood Ben's mother, Lady Stansgate. This is quite a roll call for someone who never made a fuss about who she was or what she'd done. But she was always the same from the very first moment I met her, when we were training together. I love this story. Tell me again, how did you meet? Miss Todd. Before we continue, Miss Todd, there is one practical matter that this interview must consider, that of audibility. Will a woman's voice be heard by those sitting in the rear pew? I have no fear of public speaking, Dr. Selby, and there is much to say. As I see it, the church of the future will not be defined by denominationalism, or even the profession of creeds. And yet you are the only candidate for the Congregational Church that insists on the importance of the Virgin Mary for sound church doctrine. What would Mansfield College make of you, Miss Todd? Was it not Mary who rejoiced that God put down the mighty from their seats and exalted the lowly? I foresee a time in this country, sir, when the church will have become for all practical purposes irrelevant unless it deals with the real questions facing ordinary struggling people. Questions of injustice, of the oppression of minorities, of our reliance on war to settle the disputes of the powerful. These things matter, sir, not incessant disputes over church polity. What do you see as the function of the churches in the public realm? What I see are churches grown indolent and self-satisfied with status and importance. Their leaders more interested in 
wealth and uh, titles and seats of power. You have not yet answered my question. That is because, with respect, you are asking the wrong question, Dr. Selby. What we are faced with today is not an ecclesiological problem. The question is fundamentally theological. What is God saying to the nations when women are treated as second-class citizens, when women are denied the right to vote? What is God saying to his churches when women are denied the opportunity to proclaim the gospel in his house? Then let me ask you this. How do you, as a woman, know that God is calling you to ordained Christian ministry? I recognise that this is an unusual conversation for you, Dr. Selby. Perhaps the first time you have ever had a woman sitting in this seat. But I have heard God speaking. This is what God has told me to do. Are you aware of the immense challenges that lie ahead? Sir, not to respond to that call would be an act of cowardice. I am not merely referring to the expectations that ministers must be well prepared academically, Miss Todd. Your excellent record speaks for itself. But have you ever chaired a meeting? Are you comfortable without a chaperone? God's purposes will not be frustrated by the supposed shortcomings of my gender. What if a tutor or one of your fellow students were to criticise you in sermon class? Would I need to have my handkerchief at the ready? Dr Selby, I expect better of you. Is it possible that what you are hearing is a call to be a deaconess? There is nothing wrong with my hearing, sir. I do not denigrate the vital ministry of the tea tray, but I am called to preach. Hmm. It is evident from your letters that the causes of pacifism and women's suffrage are very dear to you. These do not command popular support, as I am sure you know. As the Lord found when he challenged the religious cowardice of his day. There is no guarantee that you will even be ordained when you have completed your studies here. In addition, most ministers live on very little. You have had a comfortable upbringing. There may be a small struggling church who would be willing to call for you, but they would pay you very poorly. The God who calls is also the God who provides. It has been my long-held dream to read theology at Mansfield College, and I know the risk to your reputation is great. But I am compelled in this matter. If you give me this opportunity, I will endeavour to bring credit to the college. Well. We cannot undertake anything irregular, you understand? And you must agree to abide by the rules of your denomination. But I, for one, am impressed by your sense of call. I think you will find our facilities to your liking. We have no accommodation, so you will have to make your own arrangements, as all our male students have to do. I have arranged for you to have a tour of college with another prospective candidate, a Mr. Coltman.
Have you come far today, Miss Tot? I think I may have done, yes. But I have a lot further to go. May I take it you're here to study theology? Yes, you may. Bravo! So, where do you hope to serve? Wherever ordinary people are suffering most. Mansfield College are doing marvellous work amongst the poor. In Canning Town. Do you know London at all? Not that part of the city, no. Perhaps I could take you there someday. I think I would like that very much, Mr. Coltman. Come on, let me treat you to an Oxford tea. Perhaps the Lord will provide us with a giant slice of chocolate cake. 